We're continuing our studies in Chapter 12 on Metabolism and Bioenergetics, and in this lesson we'll be looking at the free energy of metabolism. Remember, energy is simply the capacity to do work. It's the capacity to produce or undergo some change. In a biological system, this will mean primarily the capacity for some kind of chemical change. So then the free energy is simply a property of a system. It's not a physical thing that we can put in our pockets. We sometimes speak of high energy bonds, but the bonds don't actually have a certain amount of energy stored in them. All we can do is refer to the energy of the system before we break the bond and after we break the bond. That would be the change in free energy of the system. So we look at these energy changes associated with a chemical reaction. In our simple reaction scheme, we combine reactants A and B to form products C and D, and we have an equilibrium expression for that. So we can define an equilibrium constant, a KEQ, and that will simply be equal to the concentration of the concentrations of products multiplied together divided by the concentrations of reactants multiplied together. In this case, you'll notice there's a subscript EQ associated with each of these values. So we're measuring the concentrations of reactants and products at equilibrium. So there's no net change in concentration. The system is at equilibrium. Keep in mind, this does not mean that the concentrations of A and B are equal, or that the concentrations of products and reactants are equal. It simply means that there's no net change in concentration. It's a fixed value. When the system is not at equilibrium, the reactants will move to reach those equilibrium values. Let's next define the standard free energy change for a reaction, which we denote as delta G naught prime. That is equal to negative RT times the natural log of KEQ. R is the gas constant and T is the temperature in Kelvin. And of course, as we just saw, the KEQ is this ratio of the concentrations of products and substrates at equilibrium. But what do we mean by standard free energy change? In chemistry, we use the degree symbol to represent standard state conditions, and those conditions are 25 degrees Celsius, that's 298 Kelvin, one atmosphere of pressure, and one molar concentrations of reactants. However, in a biological system, that is not sufficient to define the standard state, because as we've learned, pH is vital in all biological systems and so we add the prime to denote biochemical conditions. Here we have a table from your book illustrating and listing for us the biochemical standard state. As you can see, the first three conditions are identical to the chemical standard state, and that's why we have the degree symbol. But we must also define the pH, which under standard state conditions is 7, meaning a hydrogen ion concentration of 10 to the minus 7th molar. That also determines that our water concentration, that is the concentration of unionized water, is 55.5 molar. So then this is our biochemical standard state, again denoted by the naught prime symbols. But of course, this would be a closed system, such as we might measure in vitro. But a living cell is an open system, and so we're seldom under standard state conditions. Things can vary considerably. So what happens when the experimental conditions are not standard? Well, then we have to define a new value. That's the actual change in the free energy of the system, the delta G without any superscripts. This is the actual change in the living cell. As you can see from this equation, it's equal to the standard state delta G value, the change in the free energy of the system under standard state conditions, plus RT times the natural log of the ratio of product concentrations to reactant concentrations. So this equation shows us that the spontaneity of the reaction, that is the net value for delta G, is related not just to the standard state conditions, the delta G naught prime, but it also relates to the actual concentrations of reactants and products within the cell. 
we call that ratio of products to reactants the mass action ratio because it's the law of mass action that governs how fast reactants move towards the product side. So then we might have an unfavorable change in delta G under standard conditions, a positive delta G naught prime, but inside the cell the actual free energy change can be negative. So if we look at our expression, we're taking the natural log of the ratio of products to substrates. If our substrate or reactant concentration is high, then this ratio will be much less than 1, and if we take the natural log of that value, that gives us a negative number. We can combine that with our positive delta G naught prime, and the net might be a negative delta G. So in other words, under standard conditions, even if the reaction is unfavorable in vitro, it might be favorable in vivo inside the cell depending on the concentrations of reactants. This is one way that we can turn an unfavorable reaction outside the cell to a favorable reaction inside the cell. Another way that we can make an unfavorable reaction proceed inside the cell in vivo is if we couple it. So here's an example we're phosphorylating glucose to form glucose 6-phosphate and that is a very positive 13.8 kilojoules per mole under standard state conditions. Now we notice if we hydrolyze ATP to form ADP in inorganic phosphate under standard state conditions that's highly favorable negative 30.5 kilojoules per mole. So if we couple those two reactions together we'll sum those two values and the net is a negative 16.7 kilojoules per mole. So if both of these reactions happen concurrently, then even though it costs us energy to produce glucose 6-phosphate, if we couple that with ATP hydrolysis, the net effect is a reaction that's favorable, a negative delta G. This is a very common theme in biochemical systems. So then we can turn an unfavorable reaction to a favorable reaction in the case that we saw in the previous slide simply by increasing the reactant concentration or in this case we can couple an unfavorable with a favorable reaction and still make it happen inside the cell. In our next video lesson we're going to look more particularly at ATP hydrolysis and see how that provides us with energy.